With the HeartStart MRX, you can monitor ECG, pulse oximetry, non-invasive blood pressure, invasive pressures, end tidal carbon dioxide, and temperature, and use the diagnostic 12-lead ECG function. When monitoring ECG using the MRX, you can use the multifunction defib electrode pads or monitoring electrodes attached to a 3, 5, or 10-lead set. The ECG cable is color-coded and keyed to fit the ECG port on the measurement connector module. For proper lead placement in 3, 5, and 10-lead sets, consult the instructions for use. The monitoring leads available depend on what type of ECG cable is connected to the MRX. Press the Lead Select button to display the desired lead in Wave Sector 1. To change the waveform displayed in Wave Sector 2, 3, or 4, press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Waves. Select the desired wave and press Menu Select again. Select the desired lead. And finally choose the preferred wave size and press Menu Select again. The MRX uses the STAR basic arrhythmia algorithm for monitoring arrhythmia. It monitors pediatric and adult patients' ECGs for heart rate and ventricular arrhythmias and generates alarms. It specifically uses the ECG lead appearing in wave sector 1 for single lead arrhythmia analysis. Note that increasing the wave size does not affect arrhythmia analysis. If the device is not identifying the patient's rhythm correctly, you need to initiate relearning. To do this, press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Measurements Alarms and then HR Arrhythmia. Select Relearn Rhythm and press Menu Select. The MRX will then display a message confirming that manual relearning has begun. Now let's set up SpO2 monitoring. Insert the blue connector into this port located on the measurement connector module. When choosing a location for the SpO2 sensor, the most important consideration is to pick a site that is warm and has good perfusion. Apply the appropriate sensor to the patient. A pleth wave displays while the oxygen saturation is measured and the value is calculated. Within seconds, an oxygen saturation reading and patient pulse rate appear. As the patient's oxygen saturation changes, the SpO2 value is updated continuously. The MRX can also monitor non-invasive blood pressure. The measurement can be done automatically or manually. The first step is to select the appropriate size cuff. A properly sized cuff should span approximately two-thirds of the distance between the elbow and the shoulder and wrap around the limb meeting in the indicated area. Attach the cuff to the tubing and the tubing to the NBP port on the measurement connector module. To perform an NBP measurement, press the Start NBP soft key. The cuff inflates and then slowly deflates. If you need to stop the NBP reading, press the Stop NBP soft key. The NBP measurement appears on the screen as systolic followed by diastolic with the mean arterial pressure in parentheses. To schedule automatic NBP readings at regular intervals, press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Measurements, Alarms, NBP. and NBP Schedule. Select the desired interval and press Menu Select again. Automatic measurements begin based on the interval set. The automatic time interval appears here on the screen. The MRX offers optional invasive pressure monitoring capability with two channels of real-time continuous pressure measurements and waveforms in monitor, manual defib, and pacer modes.
To begin, prepare a pressure line according to your hospital's standard procedure. Connect the pressure cable to the HeartStart MRX. Make sure that the transducer is level with the patient's heart, approximately at the level of the mid-axillary line. If measuring intracranial pressure, follow your hospital's protocol. Now we need to verify the pressure we are monitoring by checking that the appropriate label is assigned. If you need to change the assigned label, press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Measurements, Alarms, and press the Menu Select button. Select Press 1 or Press 2 and press the Menu Select button again. Select Label and press the Menu Select button. Now select the appropriate label from the list provided and press the Menu Select button. The label is a unique identifier for each pressure type. When you choose a label, the HeartStart MRX uses that label's configured color, wave scale, and alarm settings. After selecting the label, these controls allow you to confirm or adjust the related wave scale, alarm source, and alarm limits. This symbol indicates that you need to zero the transducer. Zeroing a pressure channel should be done according to your institution's policy and for circumstances such as after moving a patient or using a new transducer. There are two ways to perform a zero with a HeartStart MRX. Using the zero soft key while in monitoring mode or using the zero function accessed through the menu select button. We'll demonstrate using the zero soft key. First, turn off the stopcock to the patient and open the transducer to atmosphere. Press the button under zero pressure on the display. Notice you can zero one or both pressure channels. Navigate to and choose the pressure you want to zero. Then press the menu select button to acknowledge your selection. Zeroing begins and this message appears. When you see this message, Close the stopcock to atmosphere, which opens the stopcock to the patient. If the pressure signal is pulsatile, numeric values are displayed for systolic, diastolic, and mean pressure. If the pressure signal is non-pulsatile, then only the mean is displayed. When both SpO2 and invasive pressure are present, the pulse measurement can be derived from either the SpO2 PLEF wave or one of the two invasive pressures with pulsatile waves. The pulse value appears in the same color as its source. In this case, the pulse source is SpO2, indicated by its cyan color. The MRX can also measure carbon dioxide or CO2. Phillips uses the microstream method of sidestream CO2 measurement. The first step in setting up the microstream system is to select the appropriate filter line. There are five factors to consider when selecting the filter line. Patient situation, ventilated or not ventilated. Patient type, adult or pediatric. Ventilation type, humidified or non-humidified the need for supplemental oxygen delivery, and the likelihood that the patient will switch between oral and nasal breathing. There are two filter line options in microstream monitoring, non-intubated nasal cannula and a filter line with an airway adapter. When using the nasal filter line, check that both nostrils are clear. Position the nasal filter line on the face by inserting the filter line tips into the nostrils. Pass the filter line tubing over the ears. Slide the sleeve up the tubing towards the neck for a comfortable fit under the chin. Check the positioning of the filter line to ensure proper detection during monitoring. When using a filter line set, place the pre-attached airway adapter on the ET tube. 
Attach the female lure connector of the nasal cannula or airway adapter to the CO2 inlet connector on the measurement connector module. Regardless of type, nasal or intubated, verify that the filter line is not kinked. To remove exhaust gases from the system, connect an exhaust tube or closed loop kit to the connector. Evaluate the filter line if a CO2 occlusion inop appears or if the readings become extremely erratic. There are two numerics associated with CO2 monitoring. The first, ETCO2 or end tidal carbon dioxide, is the peak CO2 value measured at the end of each expiration. The second is AWRR, airway respiration rate, the number of breaths per minute. In addition to the numerics, the monitor also displays the CO2 waveform or capnogram. This is the normal capnogram shape. It is important to note that on a capnogram, positive deflections represent expiration, whereas negative deflections represent inspiration, which is the opposite of most respiratory waveforms. The HeartStart MRX provides real-time, continuous temperature monitoring using nasopharyngeal, esophageal, rectal, skin, arterial, venous, core, and vesic, or urinary bladder temperatures. Measurements can be displayed in either Fahrenheit or Celsius and may be taken while in monitor, including 12-lead, pacer, or manual defib modes. To monitor temperature, connect the temperature cable to the HeartStart MRX. Select the correct temperature label for your measurement. Apply the temperature probe to the patient. The continuous reading appears on the screen. Check that the current alarm settings are appropriate for the patient. With each measurement that the MRX monitors, there are alerts to advise when your patient's condition requires attention. Specifically, there are three alert levels, red alarm, yellow alarm, and in-op message. A red alarm warns of a life-threatening condition, such as asystole or ventricular fibrillation. The cause of the alarm displays here with a red background and sounds like this. A yellow alarm indicates a non-life-threatening condition, such as when the heart rate measurement violates the high or low limits. The cause of the alarm displays with a yellow background and sounds like this. Arrhythmia alarms are also categorized as latching or non-latching alarms. With a latching alarm, visual and audible indicators remain present until they are silenced and acknowledged regardless of whether the alarm condition still exists. With a non-latching alarm, visual and audible indicators disappear when the condition no longer exists. Inops indicate a device problem or error condition, such as this leads off message, and they appear in this cyan background and sound like this. To silence active alerts, you use the menu select or the navigation buttons. Once the condition is corrected, press the menu select button to acknowledge the alarm. Setting high and low alarm limits and turning alarms on or off is the same for all measurements, so let's look at how to do these tasks using pulse and SpO2 as examples. To set the high and low limits, press the menu select button. Navigate to Measurements Alarms, SpO2, and SpO2 Limits. The high limit appears in this window. Use the up or down navigation buttons to increase or decrease the high limit. Press Menu Select to set the new high limit. Now the low limit appears. Use the navigation buttons again to adjust the low limit 
and press menu select to set the new low limit. The current high and low limits for each measurement appear next to its measurement numeric. Setting the high and low alarm limits for other monitoring parameters is similar to what you've just seen. If you need to turn off an alarm, start by pressing the menu select button. Navigate to Measurements, Alarms, Pulse, and Alarms Off. The menu closes and this icon appears next to the pulse rate, indicating that the pulse rate alarm is off. The Heart Start MRX can store up to 12 hours of vital signs trending data for review, printing, or transmission. To view the stored trending data, the Heart Start MRX must be in monitor mode. Press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Trends and press the Menu Select button. The trending report displays here. Most recent data is to the right and older data to the left. As new data is acquired, it displays on screen. The trending report only displays measured parameters. This symbol indicates invalid data, while the same symbol before a numeric indicates questionable data. A blank space indicates data that is unavailable. Periodic measurements, such as NBP, include a timestamp. Use these soft keys to scroll backward and forward in the vital signs trending report. When there is no more data in a particular direction, the soft key becomes inactive. You can adjust the display's time interval for the current patient. With vital signs trending active on the display, press the menu select button. Navigate to trend interval and press the menu select button. Use the navigation buttons to select the trend interval you want and press the menu select button. To exit the trending report, press the Close Trends soft key. When using a 10-lead ECG cable, you can view a 12-lead ECG to identify or confirm cardiac problems such as myocardial ischemia. Following placement of the 10 electrodes and connection to a 10-lead set, press the 12-lead soft key. You can now preview all 12 leads on the display. Press the Start Acquire soft key. The MRX prompts you to enter the patient's age and sex. This information is required to correctly analyze the 12 lead. After entering the required information, ECG acquisition takes place. This is followed by ECG data analysis. Upon completion of analysis, the 12 lead report screen displays. The MRX then automatically prints an interpretive 12 lead report based on the configured analysis setting. With monitoring setup complete, we can now turn our attention to the therapeutic use of the device. The Heart Start MRX provides therapy options including automatic and manual defibrillation, synchronized cardioversion, and pacing.